Let's look forward to the speech and the president's final year in office with his longest serving chief of staff and by all accounts his favorite one. Dennis McDonough, thanks for being here, Dennis. I want to talk to about um, the State of the Union in a second, but first a couple big news items Good. that I want to get your perspective sure. on. Breaking overnight, actor Sean Penn met with El Chapo in October, the big uh, drug trafficker after the Mexican drug kingpin had escaped from prison. According to the New York Times, the Mexican government is now investigating Penn and others uh, who participated in this interview. What's the Obama administration's position on this? Has the president or have you read this interview with this horrific drug dealer? Well, thanks for the opportunity to be on the show, Jake. And also what broke on Friday night is that uh, Chapo has been rearrested, which is good. He should stay behind bars. I've not read the interview. Uh, but I have read a lot of the coverage of the interview. And one thing uh, I will tell you is that uh, this uh, braggadocious uh, action about how much heroin he sends around the world, including the United States, is maddening. We see a heroin uh, epidemic, opioid uh, addiction epidemic in this country. So uh, we're going to stay on top of this with our Mexican counterparts until we get that back in the box. But El Chapo's behind bars, that's where he should stay. Any concern about Sean Penn at all? Uh, if the Mexicans want him, will the U.S. make sure that they are able to talk to him? Well, it poses a lot of very interesting uh, questions, both for him and, and for others involved in this, uh, this so-called interview. So we'll see what happens on that. I'm not going to get ahead of it. A much bigger issue, obviously, uh, is North Korea and their nuclear test. They claim it was an H-bomb. Uh, the U.S. just flew a B-52 bomber over the Korean Peninsula, uh, nuclear capable of carrying, it's capable of carrying nuclear weapons, to, to warn North Korea. Um, next week, the House is going to vote on new sanctions. What new steps does the administration want to see against North Korea? With all due respect, what's being done now does not seem to be working. Well, look, uh, we obviously did, uh, as you just pointed out, uh, underscore to our South Korean allies last night the deep and enduring alliance that we have with them. Last night was a step towards reassurance in that regard, and that was important. Uh, as it relates to what steps we'll continue to take, well, look, what we'll continue to do is work uh, not just with South Korea and Japan, but also with China and Russia to deeply isolate the North Koreans. I'm not telling you that I think that this is ultimately going to get, uh, that, that this is going to resolve this issue overnight. We're going to have to continue to squeeze the North Koreans until they live up to their prior commitments, including going back to 2005 when they committed to be rid of their nuclear weapons. That's the baseline requirement that they have to rejoin the international community. Until they do it, they'll remain where they are, which is an outcast, uh, unable to provide for their own people. China has been reluctant to, to squeeze North Korea, and they're really the only ones with the real leverage to do this um, because they apparently have made the calculation that they would rather have what passes for stable, a stable North Korea on their border uh, than, they would ha than, than their issues about a, a nuclear North Korea. Have they changed their mind at all? Well, you saw the President Xi stand on the south lawn of the White House back in September and re-emphasize uh, China's support for the denuclearization of that peninsula. We take them at their word, and we'll continue to work with them uh, and make sure that they understand that uh, a nuclear North Korea is not a stable scenario, and so well, that they have to understand that. Let's talk about the President's State of the Union address on Tuesday night. I want to show you some recent nationwide polling data from CNN. When Americans are asked if they're satisfied with the way the U.S. is being governed, 75 percent no. When Americans are asked if they're satisfied how things are going in the war on terrorism, 74 percent no. 52 percent say they disapprove of President Obama's job performance. Going into your final State of the Union, these are not the kinds of numbers that a president would want. I don't spend a lot of time looking at the numbers, Jake. I spend a lot of time looking at what we need to do to continue to keep this country safe and how we continue to grow the economy here. Last week on Friday morning, we learned that 292,000 new jobs last month. That's the 70th month in a row of job growth in this country. The, most, uh, the quickest reduction in unemployment uh, in uh, decades. The fastest rate of job growth since the 1990s when there was another Democrat in the White House, by the way. So we're going to continue to focus on those things. And well, the numbers will sort themselves out. And that's what we're focused on. And what's the president going to say Tuesday night to reassure these Americans who are worried and skeptical and anxious about the future? Well, I, I think what you'll hear from the president is what he came in and said to us late last year. He sat down with us and, and said, look, it's time for us not to focus on the State of the Union as an issue in, for the upcoming election or anything. He wants to talk about the future of this country. He's very optimistic about the future of this country. He, you'll hear him talk about every American having a shot in this changing economy. You'll hear him talk about using all the elements of our national power to protect uh, and grow the influence of this country. And importantly, Jake, you'll hear the president talk about making sure that every American has a chance to influence this democracy. Not the select few, not the millionaires and the billionaires, 
but every American. And when we draw on the strength of every American, the sky's the limit for this country. And we're seeing that just now uh, with the kind of jobs growth that we've seen. Well, you talk about jobs growth, and you also talk about the changing economy. Um, this was the worst uh, opening week for U.S. stocks ever in January. And while the economy did add the 292,000 jobs uh, you mentioned in December, Bill Clinton's former labor secretary, Robert Reich, he calls them lousy jobs. He, said, he wrote on Facebook, the U.S. continues to add lousy jobs at a fast clip. We've got in the habit of looking only at the number of jobs created rather than what they pay or how secure they are. Is he right? Well, look, what we see uh, is, as I just said, the most uh, drastic reduction in unemployment in more than three decades. And what we are seeing is a dramatically changing economy. So that's why the president is going to talk about this uh, on Tuesday night. He's going to talk about how it is that everybody can succeed in that economy. We see opportunities for Congress to help us along the way. They ought to go ahead and pass the TPP deal, which we got in the last year, uh, and which is the largest free trade agreement uh, in history, opening numerous markets to us or leaving them to China to dominate. Uh, so Congress should help us along the way, but we feel really good about the future of, these, uh, uh, of this economy and the future of this country. President Obama um, also making a big issue uh, out of gun control, talking about uh, in increasing background checks. He also said in a New York Times op-ed, he wrote in a New York Times op-ed, that he's going to become basically a single-issue voter in some ways. He's not going to support Democrats or anyone uh, who doesn't support, in his term, common sense gun legislation. Now, I, I don't know exactly what that means in terms of how he's going to make that decision. Um, Bernie Sanders, for example, uh, voted against the Brady Bill when he was in, Cong in the House. He voted to protect gun manufacturers from being sued to give them immunity. Um, does Senator Sanders meet the president's standard? I want to say three things about this. First of all, the president is not making a big issue of gun control. <laughs> What's happening in this country with over 30,000 deaths last year from gun violence is that this is a big issue in this country. 20,000 people, kids under 18 in gun safety, gun accidents, or gun violence killed over the last decade. More than 500 police officers. This isn't an issue that we're making. This is an issue that we are, need to confront as a country, point one. Point two, what the president has said is not just for the Democratic primary, but for elections for the full House, a third of the Senate, state houses and governorships across the country, people ought to treat this issue the way that these numbers demand it be treated. And that's what he's, gonna, that's what he's demanding of uh, party, uh, party candidates, Republican and Democrat, across the country. Last thing as it relates to Senator Sanders. We've seen some movement on this since uh, the op-ed appeared on Thursday. We think that's good. If that continues, that's the goal of this, is making sure that we have gun laws that are responsive to the wishes of the American people, not responsive to the wishes of uh, the big NRA bosses here in Washington. So the that's, fact what this, we're, this, that's what we're seeing. We'll continue to see that when we have a nominee, then we'll roll up our sleeves and make some decisions. So Sanders saying that he's willing to rethink his vote on immunization, uh, immunity rather, for uh, gun manufacturers uh, might make the president support him ultimately if he gets the nomination. Look, the goal here is getting common sense gun laws that will reduce that violence, that will reduce the 30,000 deaths every year in this country. And we think that that's having an impact. As we see it, we'll make some final decisions about uh, what the president will do and who will support. One of the president's strongest allies on this issue is former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg, who not only has made a big political issue out of it in New York City when he was mayor, but also his, is putting quite a bit of his fortune uh, to push for uh, gun legislation, re uh, restricting uh, gun ownership and, and the like. He's now polling, um, sources tell us, to see how a third-party candidacy by him might fare. Uh, if it came down to it, is it possible that since he's so strong in the president's view on this issue, the president might even support an independent presidential candidacy by Mike Bloomberg? It sounds to me like a hypothetical built on a hypothetical, Jake, so I'll just wait and see what happens on this. What we're focused on is common sense steps to reduce gun violence. That's what the president rolled out last week. That's what we're focused on, and that's what we'll continue to do. Last question for you. Um, president Obama, uh, when he ran for president, uh, obviously promised to unite the country. Um, the tone in this country, the divisions in this country, in many ways seem worse. Now, I'm not blaming that on President Obama, but looking back on it, is there anything that he could have done differently to actually fulfill this pledge to, to have a united and a more cohesive America? Well, I think one of the things you'll hear him talk about, as I said a minute ago in the speech on Tuesday night, is how we make sure that our politics is as good as the American people. 
And so he'll have some things to say about that on Tuesday night, Jake. So I'm not going to get too far ahead of him, but I'd say watch that space. White House Chief of Staff Dennis McDonough, it's always a pleasure to have you. Don't be a stranger. Thank you so much. Good luck Tuesday night. Thanks, man. Happy New Year. Thanks for the opportunity to be with you. Thanks for being here.